What is going on YouTube? It's your boy man like Tati and I am back again with another video guys. Guys, it's been so long. It's been how many months? Um, guys, I've missed you so much. I've missed making videos for you guys. I've missed, you know, replying to your comments, you know, to the three comments that I get. I miss making videos that you guys can sit down, grab food, grab a drink and watch. As you can tell by the title, we're going to be telling a story time. And I know how much you guys love the story times, which is why I thought if I'm going to come back, why not come back with a banger? Why not give you guys a story time of the time where I almost died in the Gold Coast? Guys, it's a crazy world we live in. For our first video back, let's get to 40 likes, okay? If we get to 40 likes, then I know that you guys are excited to see me again. Let me give you guys some backstory. So look, boom, it's October time. Okay, and I'm going to the Gold Coast for Promised Land, the concert. You guys know, controversial Promised Land. All the artists started backing out, Burner Boy backed out, Tion Wayne backed out. I'm thinking, what's going on here? Is the concert even happening? All I knew was that my tickets were booked. All I knew is that I had a place to stay, and I had flights to get there. I didn't know whether the concert was still going to be on. I don't know nothing. But I just knew that me, Nigel, um, Taku, and a few other girls were going to Promised Land, we were going to Queensland Gold Coast to have a good time, to turn up and to, you know, enjoy each other's company. A little, a little getaway trip for us because, you know, soccer had ended, um, these guys were taking leave of work. So it was a great time to actually take this time to, to go enjoy ourselves and to, to go make the most of all of us being on a break. We know black people, right? Black people like to take their time when it comes to booking tickets. I don't know why, but black people hate booking things on time. I had to nag Taku and Nigel to book their tickets probably a hundred times before we booked the tickets. And the thing is, these guys are idiots. These guys fail to understand that if you take, the more time you take to book tickets, the more in price they're gonna be, right? Like, let's get into the story time. Me, Nigel and Taku, I can't lie to you, we did not really want to book flights um, to the Gold Coast because at those times it was very expensive. Cause you know, promised land, people, everyone from all different states, different cities, different countries even, are coming to promised land for the same type of enjoyment. So obviously the prices are gonna, you know, fluctuate, 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 fluctuate. So the prices are gonna rise up in, in, you know, in price because the demand of it, okay? And I remember Nigel talked to his mom and she was like, oh, um, why don't you guys take a bus from Adelaide to Melbourne? And we're like, you know what? Let's do it. If you guys know that bus ride is 10 hours long, but you know it was calm because we were with it was me, Taco, and Nigel, and you know those are like my best one, like some of my best friends. So the bus ride wasn't too bad, although we didn't really talk to each other because I'm not trying to talk to you for 10 hours. If I'm talking to you for 10 hours, you have to be the love of my life. Um, we got to Melbourne at 6 a.m. in the morning per se, I think. Um, there was a few stops. We stopped like three times. We stopped um, the border town. We stopped in Bendigo, flipping out, and then we stopped um, just before Melbourne um, for drink breaks, pee breaks. Brother, these pee breaks, the thing is, you couldn't even tell the bus driver, look, can we please stop for the love of Christ? Because if we don't stop now, the way I'm gonna pee, guys, the way I needed to pee before our first stop was insane. How are we gonna drive for three hours with no stops? Or you think we don't have to pee? You think some of us don't have to, need, don't need to use a toilet? You think some of us are just whoop de whoop de whoop? Machines? No, I need to pee, and I need to pee now. So we get to Melbourne, boom, um, and I remember I messaged Prince. You guys should know Prince. You've seen him in some blogs before. Probably my Instagram, if you guys follow my Instagram. If you don't follow my Instagram, it's right here. Make sure you go follow it. Um, yeah, you guys seen Prince in a few videos. I called him, I said, message him saying, this is 6 a.m. on a sun, ooh, on a Friday. So he would have been out, and I messaged him, do do do. Um, we're in Melbourne, do you want to see us for a little bit before we catch our flight? Because we had a flight in like the next two hours um, to the Gold Coast. And he had a girl next to him. And I knew he had a girl next to him because this brother, usually his phone doesn't, doesn't go through. His phone was going through, so I know he could hear it. But he told this girl, he told me later on, he told the girl not to answer any calls because he didn't want to see us and it was too early in the morning. Okay, cool. We didn't see Prince. We went to some cafe, some... Italian cafe before we caught our next flight. I think it was in Carlton actually. We had, I remember, I think we all had egg, Benedi egg benedicts. And those egg benedicts, when I tell you they were hitting, oh, they were hitting. It was giving breakfast. Okay, it was giving. 
let's go to the airport now. Um, the airport wasn't, oh, it was like a 35, 40 minute drive to the airport, but we left enough time between us eating um, and enough room for us to get to the airport in time without having to stress too much, too much, okay? So we get to the airport an hour or so before our flight, which is like cool for domestic flights. You can even be there 30 minutes before your flight takes off and they'll still take you, like the baggage and stuff. I don't know why, but guys, don't try that with Jetstar and Tiger Airlines. You won't get on your flight. Get there two hours before just in case they cancel your flight, they lose your bags, or you realize the aircraft isn't even safe to travel on. These old things, Rex, Rex Jetstar, Tiger, Tiger shut down, thank God, Jesus Christ. Any more Tiger Airlines, uh, Airlines travels, I reckon we'll be, we'll, there would have been the new pandemic. So we pick our seats and we go um, to like the waiting area. I, don't, I, can't remember, I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called. What's it called? The terminal. We were, we were waiting at our terminal. I think it was terminal 30 something. Because you know, jets are in that. <laughs> Brother, jets are in that. I, okay guys, one thing about me, I don't care what flight, what, you know, what air, airline I'm taking. I want to just get there. People in the comments, People telling me, oh, you should have took Qantas, that's why you did, that's why that happened, so you should have took Virgin Airlines. Why? Why should I? Why should I pay an extra $400 to get where I want to go, where I could just get to the same place for $92? The tree may have some unsafe business, some bolts on the, on the wing might come off, but we'll get there. Charging our phones, because by this time our phones were dead because of the 10 hour bus ride. Charge our phones a little bit, and we all had AirPods. <laughs> Disaster number two, we all have AirPods. Uh. And I remember Nigel went over there somewhere. Oh my God, this trip was crazy. Nigel went to get like a coffee or something and he left his AirPods and his phone charging. And keep in mind, I'm right next to the phone and charger, the phone and the AirPods. And me, yeah, me and Togo are right next to the phone and AirPods. So we know that it's there. Okay, Nigel comes back, has his coffee and that's about the time we're going to board now. So now we're boarding. This nigglet, Nigel, leaves his airpods, takes his phone, and we board the plane. And only on the plane is where this guy says, oh, I think I forgot my airpods. So this guy tells the flight attendant, look, can I please go and find my airpods quickly? I'll just run there. Can they let me back in? They say, yes, you can go look. This guy goes, runs, comes back, nothing. The airpods are gone, they're not there anymore. And now I'm thinking, hold on, we could be accused for stealing. Every time I took my AirPods out, Nigel would look at me some type of way like they're his AirPods. Nigel, these aren't your AirPods. They're not your AirPods. Brother, you left your AirPods somewhere. Now you want to blame me? Now you want to look at me like I'm some type of thief? Like I'm some type of culprit? Like I would do that to you? Are you serious? Okay, so he loses his AirPods, but he doesn't deep it too much because it's it, they're just AirPods. What can you do? Okay, he can, buy, he can buy a new one. Brother, he works at Tommy Hilfiger. He does mechanical engineering. Brother makes big, big bucks. So AirPods... Light one, light one, light one, light one. Okay, it's a great flight actually. Smooth, fast, fast, smooth and patient. I actually enjoy, this is probably the, one of the first flights that I've actually enjoyed up until we got to the Gold Coast. We get to the Gold Coast, keep in mind, I check my forecast, the weather forecast, I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be sunny in the Gold Coast. It's gonna be nice in the Gold Coast. It's gonna be up, jump, summer vibes in the Gold Coast. We are flying in the Gold Coast, Queensland, and it's raining, raining, raining. Thunder, thunder, thunderstorms. I thought the plane didn't have any left, any more left in it. I thought we were definitely going down for sure the way the plane was going. Do, 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 do. Guys, when you know that a plane can't land on the runway because of the weather, that's when you know you have a slight issue. Guys, this plane tried to land twice and it didn't land. Third issue, because now I'm scared for my life. And I just lost these airports. We had to take the bus to Melbourne. And now the plane wants to do dodgy, dodgy, dodgy. But we land, by the grace of God, we land. In the Gold Coast, everybody's driving nice, nice cars. Everyone's driving Range Rovers, Jeeps. I don't know whether I was in Las Vegas or Gold Coast. I mean, it might as well be Las Vegas, right? Because the way people were driving. Guys, but the traffic in the Gold Coast, I'm telling you, a place that would take you five minutes. If I wanted to walk, if I wanted to drive to Easy Mart or or the service station that's five minutes, it would take me 25 minutes to get there because of how the traffic is. The traffic was insane. The traffic was terrible. The traffic was undeniable, unforgivable, unexplainable. That's one thing about Gold Coast that I did not like. And how the people looked, the people were looking at me, Taco and Nigel, like they'd never seen a black person in their life. I was starting to think maybe they have laws that ban black people the way they were looking at us. Then someone looked at me and said to me, you look exotic. I said, exotic? I said, what? Exotic like the things they say in Avatar. 
I look, I went on the internet and I said, I typed up a black people allowed in Gold Coast because I didn't know. How can you look at me, turn your whole head like this, like I'm some type of alien? Like I'm not supposed to be here. I promise you, Gold Coast Service Paradise that weekend had the most black people they've probably ever seen in their life. Because the way black people were blacking in Gold Coast was crazy. We get to our, our hotel. Our hotel was nice. The people were like, oh my god, you're the guy from TikTok. And I'm like, yeah, baby, you know what I mean? So it was just vibes on vibes. We got there, we started drinking as soon as we landed. We went to some place called Pacific Fair. I've never seen that many black people ever in my life. Ever in my life. Ever. But it was lit. I'm telling you, it was lit. But the thing is, it was raining. That was still an issue. It was raining, it was pouring. Burner Boy had cancelled. Tion Wayne had cancelled. Someone else had cancelled. So what was the point of him going? I only went there for Burner Boy. Thank God an, orga an, an event organiser from Melbourne Organize some events in, in, in the Gold Coast because his brother was playing a set in the Gold Coast So he had to organize some things because he knew people weren't gonna go Burner Bird cancel. What's the point? Tion Wayne cancel. What's the point? Keep in mind there was Afrobeat sets at Promised Land, but we wanted to see the people. Keep in mind guys We started drinking from the time we got there. So you can tell by 3 p.m. We got to, 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 to Gold Coast from like 11 when we went out to a club, to an event that was organized because people didn't want to go to Promised Land, well, the black people, right? Um, so, drinking, 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 Hennessy, tequila. <sighs> I have never mixed that many drinks in my life. I was doing bartender, bartender in my body. My liver was saying, please, that's, I can't take this anymore. And I was saying, no, you will. Well, we kind of, we chilled at our hotel for a little bit. Then we met up with some friends a bit later on because, you know, like, we wanted our own time to kind of, you know, set plans, run three-man teams. You, you know how it goes, okay? So, and then towards like six, seven, that's when we, um, you know, went to some friend's house to, to, to drink and to, you know, have fun, plan murders before we went out all together, okay? And I remember, like, there was this girl that I was talking to from Canberra, and she was there, she was there in the Gold Coast as well. I didn't know that. Oh, I did. I did know that, but I didn't know that a friend that I also found attractive was coming too. Okay, so we're all there in the apartment chilling, and I remember like me and her, the friend of the girl that I used to talk to. Um, we were like hitting it off, you know. We were, we were, we were talking, you know. We shared a kiss, like we were just hitting it off to a point where it made the other girl uncomfortable and pissed off, and. That's what caused another issue. This girl got pissed off. Now she's getting all her friends, she's pissed at me, and they're leaving without us, and then we don't even know where they're going. Keep in mind, they knew where the event was. I had to do search and search and digging, digging to find out where the event was, and they had just left, and we were there kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, you know, stranded. And we didn't want to pay for the Uber. That's one of the reasons why we were pissed. Everything was going wrong. The liquor was liquoring. Still, I'm in my. Nonetheless, it was still fun. We were vibing. So me and the boys, we go to the event and it's lit. When I tell you it's lit, it's lit. I'm telling you, bass. I'm telling you, music's on point. Oh, everything was just lit. The vibes were cool because everyone came because what? It was raining. No one wanted to go to the festival while it was raining, right? So it was packed. Um, I remember the event people were saying that it's never been this packed. Or the the um, the building managers or like you know, they were like, oh, it's never been this packed in the Gold Coast ever, and I'm like, yeah, because it's the Gold Coast. There's no black people here at all. First night was all good, cool. Wake up the next day, headache, and the headache that I was experiencing, wow. And this is the day of nonsense. This is the day that I almost died. This is the day where lives could have changed. It would have been man like gone, not man like Tats. Who's man like Tats? Is man like gone? Tats, me? TikTok's a YouTuber? Sound a comedian? MC on the side? Me? We wake up, boom. We go to some some other person's um hotel and we're just chilling there for a little bit. We're chilling, seeing what we're gonna do, seeing what we're gonna do for the rest of the night, okay? Um, they didn't live too far from us, these ones. Um, Whitney, Rufaro, um, you know, actually, they didn't live too far from us. So it was a walking distance. So we all grabbed lunch. I can't remember what we ate. But we all grabbed lunch. We had, um, we went to an escape room. We, you know, went into a, a naughty shop. 
<laughs> that show was nasty. And just chilled for the whole day together. While we were drinking the whole day together. And I remember I made a video saying, Melbourne, um, this is how we do it. This is how we get lit on the Gold Coast. <laughs> that was not how we get lit on the Gold Coast. I'll tell you that right now. I don't regret a single thing of that trip. Like if there's one thing, I would do that all again with all the same outcomes because that's how much fun I had with these people. And we're going again this year, so catch us there. But this was a trip to remember and I'll always want to go have a trip with these people, plus a few more. And it was time for us to go out. So we all go home, we change a little bit. Keep in mind it's still raining a little bit. Um, boom, first issue. We take an Uber back home, right? That was cool, we get changed. Then we take an Uber to Promise Land because we wanted to see what it was like. We wanted to see if it was worth going to. When I tell you the, the line for cars to get into that Promise Land probably spanned one kilometer. Like one kilometer of just of cars wanting to get into Promise Land. So we could have, like I needed to pee. So I could have, this is what I did, I paid, like, because it was, traffic was crazy. I paid, came back, the car was still in the same spot that I left it. That's how crazy the traffic was. I fall asleep because I was just, I was so lit, um, so drunk, and we were still drinking, we were just so tired. Um, but we get to Promised Land and realize like this is dead, this rain, it, it was, it's hard to rain more. It was dead, it was raining, everything just wasn't going to plan. Boom. We realized after the Uber's gone, Nigel's left his phone in the Uber. So now, Nigel's lost his AirPods. Now he's lost his phone. You might as well not even be alive, right? How has he done that? I didn't even know. I, 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 I looked at him weirdly. I'm like, dude, are you okay? Because at this point, you're doing it on purpose. To use my phone, and you know, I, I, I didn't mind because that's my, that's my boy. But if other someone else was using my iPhone, my phone to find their phone, for the whole day and using my phone like it's theirs, pissed me off. But Nigel was cool because we needed to find his phone. But that's what he was doing the whole day. He was using me and Tucker's phone to, to try to find it. He was using his laptop. We had to go, we had to walk all the way back home. Just like 20 minutes walk in the rain, imagine, just to find the phone um, and to try, just try to find a way to get the phone. He never found his phone, nor his AirPods. I, I remember he saying like, look, there's nothing much I can do. Let's just go to the girl's apartment and just enjoy the rest of the night, okay? And that's what we did. Went to the apartment. They, oh my God, you know what messed me up? The jungle juice. This girl put a whole bottle of tequila, a whole bottle of, like three whole bottles of tequila, three whole bottles of vodka, Juices. It wasn't even mixed. Oh, actually, no. It, it it did taste pretty good, but it was poison. And I remember she said, "If we can finish this, and in, in whoever finishes this first gets a hundred dollars." My dumbass. Two of them. And I didn't catch up. It was saying, "Okay, you're doing this. I'll punish you later." And punish me. It did. Get into the club. I'm fine. I'm fine doing my dance, dancing by myself a little bit. You know. We get to the go to the bar. Boom, lights out. But with me, I get very emotional when I'm when I'm that drunk. I get very, very emotional. So I fall. These guys are carrying me out like I'm an ant carrying chips. They carried me like I was like they were ants carrying a flipping chip. I remember boom, hit my head on the floor. Not once, but two times the police had to come. And I was like, I'm dying, I'm dying. I told these guys I was dying. And then I don't know what got a hold of me. I got up, like nothing happened. And I, sp I was started to sprint off. I don't know what I was doing. I started to sprint off. And run away from every everyone because I was that emotional. I was crying. I was like, I'm going to die. I'm dying. I can't do this anymore. Please help me. I'm telling you, the scene that was caused that day, oh my God. And I remember we didn't even go to an ambulance. We just took an Uber home. And everyone was worried. They're like, Tattoo you okay? People from Adelaide would mess with me, Tattoo UK, you good? And I, like, it was the craziest thing. That's not even the end of it. I leave my phone in the Uber. I leave my phone in the Uber. And the next day I realize, and I'm like, oh my God. But luckily, oh my God, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, Taku and Nigel worked their asses off to get my phone back. The Uber driver, I don't know what it is with Uber drivers, this guy was trying to hold my phone hostage. This guy was trying to hold my phone ransom. This brother said, give me 50, like, was like 50 to $100 and I'll get your phone back. And I was worried that like he picked up other people and they would have taken my phone as well. And by the grace of God, Taku said before he went on his flight the next day going home, 
He told me, your phone's at the police station. I said, oh my God. I said, oh my God. You know how I told you that walk to the girl's apartment wasn't that far? I get all my stuff, didn't even check out of the hotel. I didn't even check out. I just grabbed my stuff, put it in the suitcase, started walking. My head is pounding, pounding, and throbbing, throbbing, pounding, and throbbing. I'm vulnerable at this point. I'm tired, I can't even see straight. I'm dead. Seriously, I was dead, guys. Into the place and say my phone, like, they were like, oh my god, are you okay? Like, we know what happened, we saw you. Like, are you okay? They're trying to like, you know, are you okay, are you okay? I'm like, guys, I'm fine. I just need my phone. I need my phone. And I said, it's at the police station, can you please book me an Uber so I can go to the police station? Um, I get to the police station, <sighs> they were about to close. I get my phone back. It's there, live, it's got a crack on it, but I'm, I'm like, oh! God is good and I always thank Taco and Naji for doing that for me. That's not even the end of it. Fast forward a couple days because I stay at my cousin's house. Um, keep in mind, my head is still pounding. Like, I'm telling you, I would go in and out of consciousness so many times while at, the, at her house because it, it was back in Brisbane. So we were in Gold Coast, everyone left. I went to my, my cousin's house in Brisbane. Um, I was so sick, like tired, my head was hurting so bad. Like, I didn't know how I was even going to like manage. Um, so the day comes of me going on my flight, I get one of my friends to come pick me up and take me to the airport, thank you so much, bless you. Um, on my flight, oh, pounding, 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 I get picked up and I say, can you please take me to, so I, I get picked up, she takes me to home, she takes me home, and I say to my mum, mum, I can't do this, my head is pounding, I told my mum that I fell, I just fell, I, my head's pounding, we go, or oh, I drive my, I drive myself to the hospital, and um, they're like, the wait time's gonna be like six, seven hours. And keep my head is throbbing, throbbing, throbbing. And I'm like, I can't wait six, seven hours. So I go home the next day, I go to a clinic that's like 10 minutes from my house and they see me straight away. They see me straight away, they put me on blood tests, they put um, heart monitors, they get head scans, every single thing, chest scans. Cause I told them what happened. I said, I had a little bit to drink. I fell, hit my head. My head's been pounding, consciousness, like everything's just crazy. They come back with the heart scans, they, they say that my heart is not beating properly. They say there's a, there's a tube in my heart that's not releasing blood and give, putting black, blood back into my heart properly. Stress. Oh my god. And the way my heart dropped, because the thing is with me, I came there because my head was hurting. I came there to get head scans because I thought maybe something's wrong. Maybe something's wrong with my head. Maybe I have a concussion. Maybe I could have bleeding in the brain, right? Um, but they say, there's nothing wrong with your head. Your head's fine. It's your heart that's, that's, that's really, really bad. And they were doing scans, scans on scans on scans. Like I was in the hospital for like four, four days. And my parents and my siblings were all on holiday in Kangaroo Highland. Like the next, the next day they went on holiday. So when I got back, the next day they were going on holiday. Um, so I was there in the hospital by myself for like four days. And I remember like just being so scared. They did this thing onto me where they pushed my heart rate to 180 beats per second so they, so they could find what was wrong and they couldn't find anything and I, the way that medicine made me feel brother it was crazy like I now like they couldn't find anything but I now I don't know if you guys can see look I now have a loop recorder in my chest so if anything happens I have this thing where it scams it beep 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 if I ever fall unconscious or anything like that it will scam my heart They'll bring it back to the lab and they'll tell me what's wrong, what's wrong, not wrong, if they could find anything. But the thing is, I feel like I've always had that because if I've been playing sport all my life. I came there for my head. I didn't feel anything with my chest or my heart. You know what I mean? So I think I've always had something like that, like a heart murmur, right? But they thought it was something bad because the, the, the waving and stuff in my heart was like... They said I have a heart of a 90-year-old. Some of my friends let, let me sleep over their house. Thank you so much. Um, because they didn't want to leave me by myself, but Taku left with no nyash. Nigel left, left his phone and his, his iPhone in the Gold Coast, and I left the concussion and a heart problem. But at the end of the day, I don't regret anything, and I would not flip and change that trip for anything. Guys, that is a story time of how I almost died. That's the story time of how it could have been man like God instead of man like Tats. That's the story of how God is real. And now if you have friends that care about you, it will show that they flipping care about you. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, comment on what you thought about the situation, what you thought about the story time. If you want any more videos, how glad you are to see me back. Guys, 
If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share this video to your friends and family if you haven't read it. And it's been your boy, Man Like Tats, and I'm out. Peace.